Looking at game journalism, it is complete and total garbage. Kotaku being one of the prime examples to take a look at when it comes to garbage journalism. It baffles me about how they're even still functioning as a website. I mean, you look at takes like, Soul games are great, except for the sexist messages from some players. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's Persona 5 DLC includes a disability slur. 15 hours with Hogwarts Legacy. Magical surface, rotten core. Gamers are sexist. JK Rowling is a turf. <laughs> you know, people come to question why people don't go to game journalism or respect game journalists. Yeah, no. This is a prime example as to why. Taking a look a few months back at the Pikami situation, popular VTuber Pikami retires following Hogwarts legacy controversy. Though evidence suggests that criticism was clear in its disappointment, but did not seem to escalate to harassment. However, Pikami's most militant fans seem to take issue with the callout all the same. Oh my dear god. Like, right there in itself. Trying to act like this didn't escalate to harassment. The Twitter activists went completely nuclear. Like, they were attacking her, they were harassing her, they were sending her death threats. The Twitter activists went absolutely batshit psychotic over this. It was absolutely disgusting. And yet, here's Kotaku over here acting like, oh, you know, there wasn't harassment. No, you have to literally be blind to have not seen that. Kotaku is peak clown news. But the ball washing bastards. Now, this leads us to Nintendo. As while Nintendo is a flawed company, there are things I could point out about it that have issues, they did do something good recently. Kotaku, blacklisted by Nintendo for posting leaks. <laughs> Probably one of their more based things that they've done. Now, to my understanding, I could be wrong, but to my understanding, I believe this was over Metroid Dread when Kotaku tried to support piracy when the game was released, as well as posting leaks of Splatoon 3 before its release. I could be wrong, but to my understanding, that's what may have led to this. Now, this all started on April 26th, where one of their lead reporters, Ethan Gatch, Gooch, who cares, uh, it's preview day for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, a huge game I would love for Kotaku to be able to inform its millions of readers about firsthand. Unfortunately, Nintendo still has it blacklisted from advanced coverage, a move I would argue is both unprofessional and coercive. Yeah, okay, okay. You know, because it's real professional to try to guilt trip Nintendo into taking you off the blacklist and get advanced coverage. Oh yeah, real professional. And who goes to Kotaku for gaming news anyways? Seriously, they are beyond butthurt. They're ass mad. Look at little Goblin Jr. Gonna cry? Now, of course, not long after this, they then on May 2nd decided to post this. Everything we're learning about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom from the leaks. So, in retaliation, because they didn't get their way, and clearly have the mentality of a five-year-old, they made this article where they got the leaks illegally, of course, and did this to spoil it for people. Like, real professional. <laughs> I mean, seriously, anybody should blacklist them. I mean, my god, Kotaku, this is terrible. Like, they made themselves look worse than they already are. Like, and, and they looked terrible before. People called them out on this, understandably so. One person saying a Kotaku senior editor recently complained about being blacklisted by Nintendo of America pre-release coverage, so in retaliation, they decided to publish leaks for Tears of the Kingdom. Unprofessional and insanely petty of them. Clown website with clown editors. Yeah, because Kotaku has no journalistic integrity. <laughs> I love this meme. This meme is beautiful because it's a fact. There is no, zero <laughs> integrity from Kotaku. And for them to go this far. And then, if you thought the situation couldn't get any dumber. Oh no, no. There were some people with brain rot that were literally coming in to defend Kotaku. Stating, literally the coolest thing Kotaku could do if the games industry is going to engage in anti-press, anti-audience market manipulation by trading access for coverage, Kotaku is heroic <laughs> for spreading information Nintendo doesn't like being shared. You in full retard, man. Never go full retard. You have to be a complete and total idiot to want to stand by Kotaku's side and call them a hero for posting illegal leaks. Oh my god. Like, the amount of stupidity for this person to think that Kotaku's the right side to stand on. 
Like, look, you can have issues with Nintendo because Nintendo's done some things that I can even sit here and say that I do not agree with. But there are some instances where I can sit here and go, yeah, Nintendo did something good. This is definitely one of those instances. Like, if you're going to be like this guy and have brain rot and literally sit over here and defend Kotaku for what they did, then you're the cuck's cuck. I mean, I've seen some really pathetic things, but, like, this is one of the most pathetic. But then this proceeds to Luke Plunkett, because on the very same day, on May 2nd, he then made this tweet. For the record, this is how I feel about publisher blacklist to which he literally posted a picture of world war ii kill markings of nazis and the japanese <sighs> boy that escalated quickly i mean that really got out of hand fast it jumped up a notch it did didn't it how would people not see this as racist <laughs> I mean, he's basically saying here that shooting down Nintendo is like shooting down Japanese and Nazis in World War II. Like, how was this not seen as racist? Like, how did he think that this was going to go? It wasn't going to go well. I mean, seriously, like, right here, if I was his boss, he would have been terminated. I would have fired him on the spot. <laughs> this would not have been a question. I mean, dude, this is stuff you lose your job over. Like... And then he, of course, puts his foot in his mouth and he's all like, Hi, I want to talk about a bad, dumb tweet I made earlier this week. After locking his Twitter account and then unlocking it, by the way. But, uh, so he proceeded to say, So earlier this week, there was a blacklist discourse. I wanted to make a little joke that I'm actually proud of our blacklist because they show we're going after these companies in ways that matter that they're not used to. I had the half brained idea more like no brain, to use kill markings for this. Googled it and used the first pick I got back. You know, each kill marking was us racking up another publisher who wasn't going to even respond to simple emails. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. A lot of people I know liked the tweet. They clearly understood the joke, and I left it. I came back to some shit. Others had read the tweet differently. And before long, I was being accused of being everything from anti-Semitic to calling for the murder of Japanese nationalists. What did you expect? <laughs> What did you expect from what you posted? Seriously. I initially ignored this because versus the intent of the tweet, it all seemed so absurd that it wasn't even worth engaging with. That was my second dumb mistake. Some of those concerns were genuine. Many more were not. But regardless, it was all down to the fact that I am an idiot and didn't consider the full consequences of using an image from World War II like that. It was callous, reckless, and insensitive. And for that, I am sorry. He clearly knew what he was doing. He's sorry because he got caught. That's that's what he's apologizing for. He's not really sorry. He's just sorry he got caught. It was never my intent to say anything other than, These companies suck. Ah yes, the companies that suck, that actually pay for advertisement on your site. I mean seriously, this is so backwards. You would think that you would try to keep those companies on your side so you could, I don't know, make money? Rather than do things to make them leave and lose it? I mean seriously. <laughs> Luke's an idiot. This guy is a moron. <laughs> like, this is this is some clown shit right here. So I'm truly sorry to anyone and everyone who, uh, for using such an image and need to be better, much better with this kind of stuff in the future. Shaking my head, should have used this. And if you thought Kotaku couldn't dig the graves even further, on May 11th they posted this. It's good that there's a 6 out of 10 Zelda review score. It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> and if you thought it couldn't get any more pathetic, well then there was this. On May 21st. Everybody think this Zelda tears at the King Designer for making Ganon hot. An obviously pathetic take on Kotaku's part as always. And one person pointed out, when it's a dude, it's positive. I know you do this hypocrisy stuff a lot, but I hate seeing it every time. To which they posted articles by Kotaku like these. 
Metal Gear turned 35, but Quiet's character design marks a timeless controversy. Quiet, Metal Gear Solid 5's bikini-clad sniper got lost in Kojima's desire for action figures. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake, changing Ashley's skirt gives me hope of skirts don't start and end with Resident Evil 4. They have a whole brief history. At E3, Soul Calibur's objectified women felt like a relic of the past. In Soul Calibur 6, Ivy Valentine will be as she always was, wrapped in stringy cloth, balloon breasted, mostly naked. The Resident Evil 4 remake totally failed Ashley Graham. Capcom's remake thankfully cut Ashley's upskirts, but it forgot to add a personality. You know, this is the stuff that people get tired of, you know, Kotaku with their complete hypocrisy. I mean, this isn't just a Kotaku thing, though. Obviously, game journalists in general, they do this, and people get tired of this. People get tired of being shamed for liking something. People get tired of being told how to live their lives. When game journalists, all they should be doing is, oh, I don't know, reviewing games. It's really not that hard to do. And then you go back to Hogwarts Legacy. Even before the game came out, they had articles like, Hogwarts Legacy lead designer used to run anti-social justice YouTube channel. Or, Hogwarts Legacy developer quits following backlash over a YouTube channel updated. And that article is by Luke Plunkett. And in that article by Luke Plunkett, apparently Troy Levitt's sin was, he also ran a reactionary YouTube channel. I mean, that's literally the crime, apparently. And then... He goes on in the article to say, Among Levitt's videos are lengthy defenses of both John Lester, the Pixar co-founder who left his position in Disney in 2017 after allegations of sexual misconduct, and Nolan Bushnell, the Atari co-founder who Kotaku's reporting found to have fostered a toxic work environment for women. In some of his videos, Levitt expressed support for Gamergate, a movement that fostered harassment against women and other minorities in gaming industry, and criticized Anita Sarkeesian's Charles vs. Women series as an uninformed fringe position. Levitt discussed his opinions on Gamergate in depth during a 2017 interview, saying Gamergate, while painful at times, on the whole, proved to be a good thing. But Troy himself, as it turns out, actually was planning on retiring. He was starting to have family issues around 2020 and decided to leave. And, you know, when you have Twitter freaks and Twitter activists coming after you, yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd be a bit tired of it yourself. So he left. But, of course, Luke Plunkett, in his own article, couldn't help but take jabs at J.K. Rowling because Kotaku will always find a way to try to attack her. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. It's pathetic, them going as far as to look into a guy that was developing the game, digging up his past, and trying to use it against him to get him fired. I mean, these people are insane. Like, it's like that they just hired people from a psych ward, and that's your Kotaku journalist. Or, well, really, a lot of these game journalist sites for that matter. But it's really not that hard to review games. All you really need to do is talk about the game, talk about its story, its gameplay, characters... Talk about the positives and the negatives. Talk about why it's good or why it's bad. You know, that's all you have to realistically do. It's not that hard to understand. Make some guides for certain areas. You know, just stuff like that. Maybe talk about upcoming DLC with interviews, if you could get them. You know what I mean? Maybe throw in some jokes here and there that could keep your readers invested. You know, but yeah, no. Just looking at game journals like Kotaku. It's nothing but a clown show. Complete and total circus. Moral of the story, don't be Kotaku.